I mentioned in the last video that uh, we was going to be out on the allotment, tidying up. It's still bitter cold outside with an icy wind, but no use in delaying it any longer, so let's crack on. I'm going to be doing these beds one at a time and I'm starting off with this end one and particularly this end. I've got these four tanks here which was originally me carrot tanks and uh, more or less empty now so what I want to do is top them up but the bulk of it I'm going to be using this and this is a horseman I've just got down from the pile. This is a 120 litre barra and I reckon one of them in each one and I'll be able to just top it up with a bit of waste compost, potato compost and stuff like that. And the first one I'm going to be planting is for the elephant garlic. But what to do first is get these done. You can see from behind me, although the sun's out, it's still cold and the sky looks a bit dark. So I better crack on before it starts raining again. <laughs> I've got the first two tanks half filled with manure and just scratching around now to get some topsoil and spent compost to level them up. Now before I move the other two tanks across, what I've done is I've given this section a good hoeing, took the weeds out and I've laid a layer of compost on the top. I'm not going to bed that in. What I'll do now is move these other tanks across and when I fill them with compost and manure, they'll find their own level. Just had a change of plan down the other end of the allotment. I'm not going to start clearing this up yet, but what I'm going to do while I'm down here is lift a few of these legs so we can have them for our lunch. So I don't know what the lot look a bit battered, but we'll see. That's four I've salvaged. There's still a few more in, but I put the four through this one. I was getting it out, so nevertheless, that'll wash the soil out, and I'm sure they'll taste just as good. Well, that or a bad crop off them legs. I'm quite surprised, and there's still probably four, six left. I can harvest probably later on, a week or two. Um, I've just topped these beds up now. These I'm ready. I'm quite happy with these as well. The manure might look a bit high level in there, but what I've done, I've actually got inside and, and trampled it down, so it's compacted it quite well. And then I've uh, just put the potato compost on. It's probably three 30 litre buckets between the two. So uh, I'll, play, I'll get these done tomorrow now. It's starting to get cold, the wind's picking up, and I've had enough. So I'll see you in the morning. Another job worth having a look at now is your secateurs. Make sure they're nice and sharp. This is a little diamond foil and it's ideal for curved surfaces. Just pull it towards you at an angle three or four times then just rub it flat on the back of the blade and you'll find that then it'll be as sharp as a razor because I've got the ideal job for these now. Come and join me on the allotment. Now we've got a nice sharp pair of secateurs. Ideal time to cut down the autumn fruiting raspberries. Really, they should have been done a little bit early because, as you can see, the foliage has started bursting. But nonetheless, I'm not going to take these right the way down yet because I'm not too sure if I'm going to plant these either in the border or maybe I've got some tanks. I'm thinking about putting them on here as a permanent fixture. That's my suspension shelf, all lashed up. And the sweet peas are on there. I've added a little plastic cover on the top of there, just a bit of added protection and warmth. And hopefully that will do the job, as I said, uh, unless we've got any SAS or commando mice who can 
crawl up the grapevine and hop across, but I think I'll take that risk. Anyway, let's see how these go. I just want to share something with you here. These brassica seedlings, as you can see, are quite leggy. And normally, you can just pop them deep, pot them on, and away they'll go. But in this case, these are actually swede. So uh, because we swede, we eat the root. I don't like planting these deep because of leggy plants. I will do on this occasion, and I'm going to mark the pot, but also as a backup, I'm going to re-sow. I'm going to now start sowing me some flowers. These of me have been collected from the ones I've grown over the last few years, the big giant ones. And uh, this was actually full. It's gone down that small because they've been feeding them to the birds. They love them. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be sowing these in cell trays. I find with sunflowers that they don't like disturbance much. They tend to droop and then feel sorry for themselves. So by planting them in these cell trays, I've actually put them on easy with minimum root disturbance. Not only am I growing them, I'm going to be also growing these, which I'm called dwarf sunflowers. I think they only grow, of, I don't know, just have a look at the packet. 80 centimetres, so that's what, two feet in old money. And I uh, actually bought these from Lidl. Ridiculous price their seeds are. I think it was something way less than a pound anyway. It's like 60 pence or something. So I'm going to give these a go and see how they fare with the others. Just give you a little closer look at the seeds there. There's probably about 16, 18 seeds in there. These are my own sunflower seeds in here now. Now before I cover the old, like most of my seeds, I like to give them a spray so I know that the seed is damp contact with the compost. And then I'll just fill the holes in, put them aside, and I won't actually water these again. As part of this bed cleanup, I've got to obviously remove what's in there. And there's more parsnips left than I thought there was. Quick count, there's 12, 14 here. So I'm going to be digging these up. The season just gone. It's been quite a good year for parsnips. I've had some nice ones out. So uh, hopefully we'll repeat the same procedure next year. In the meantime, I'm going to get these out. I'm just clearing the dregs out of the carrot tank. These have done really well in here this year. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the video, I'll put a link up at the top somewhere, and also in the notes. How I made this, this is an old, two old bins I've got given by them. Originally, they used them building sites for doing compound mixes. And these are just the carrots, what's left. It's quite high up to the top, this was. It's probably dropped 10 centimetres at least. But I've got some more compost that I'm going to sift in. I'll probably also, I've got some ground... Um, chicken pellets I've put in the blender and also a bit of blood fish and bone I'll, I'll put that right the way down so it isn't too nutritious at the top and uh, then we can think about planting in another month or two's time I've done the first pass weeding as good as I can I've had the old herdy gurdy out I've took about six inches of layer off put it through that and got all the weeds out as best as I can now before I actually top it up with better soil and finer soil, I've given these a drink of liquid comfrey. It smells quite uh, pungent. <laughs> well, I've already done that tank, so all I'm doing is this. Right the way in. And I'm gonna let that then soak down for a good few weeks before I actually put the top soil on and that will give you a chance then sink down to the bottom and hopefully encourage the roots of the carrots to go down as well. As I mentioned before my local British garden centres the uh, Bathgate multi-purpose compost a fantastic offer of two for seven pound and I've just picked up another 12 bags. There's 12 bags loaded here popping these back home now to go and uh, use to fill up the containers for the potatoes. Back at home, I'm uh, just starting off the first one of them bags of compost you just saw me pick up. And I'm going to start sowing or planting me uh, potatoes. These are the first early, this variety is called Swift. A bit light compared to some, but I'm never in a race for the great potato race. 
the race I'm in now at the moment is the weather because there's a big black cloud up there coming over. Anyway, nice bag of compost. This is just the usual way. Put a bit of compost in the bottom of the bucket. And uh, four tubers in the bucket, there's two. And put a layer of compost. And then another two tubers. These have chitted well. The um, spruts on these are really nice. So I'll just put two, first of all, in line with the handles. And what I'll do then, I add a bit of granular potato fertiliser. Just chuck that in there and start adding more compost and just put two the opposite way around I actually fill my buckets right up to the top rather than wait until the foliage appears and then do it but uh, if you want to have a closer look more in detail I'll grow potatoes both in containers and also in the open ground put a couple of little links up here in the video and also in the show notes and if you click on them it will show you in more detail anyway I'm going to crack it up that's four buckets done now. All I've got to do is pop the labels on. Um, so this compost I'm using is fantastic stuff. It's just pop in and have a look at here. This is uh, how fine it is. And it's going to be a sad loss when we've got no more of this. I found a nice little spot in the cold frame to put them in. To give them a final watering. Put the glass lights on. It'll make a nice little warm environment for the next few weeks. For the original allotment tidy up, the plan was to start on one bed, do that and actually move along. But like all plans, someone comes along and scuppers them. The main problem I've got at the moment is the greenhouse in the garden is filling up rapidly, so I'm getting short of space. Looking at the brassicas that I've potted on recently, they were in a state now where I can think they could go out into the coal greenhouse here and them strong enough to survive. If we have a bit of cold weather, I can just pop a bit of fleece on. So to do that, I've got to create some space in there. And the first thing to do on moving is these pots of gladioli. Fortunately, these are in the terracotta pot. And by the time I put the lights back on the coal frame, this heats up quite quickly and these will generate quite a bit of heat and hopefully bring them back on into shoot. First of all, once I put them in, I'll give them the light water. Starting out emptying the uh, auto pots. These are the ones that grew me tomatoes in. So obviously they'll have fresh compost in this. There's the weed control disc back in there. I'll give these a good washing out before I reuse them again. But the compost I'm going to spread over the top of the bean bed. And so uh, this will make a nice top dressing. The bean bed has certainly benefited from the soil out of the water pot. And uh, I've got that rake in. I'll probably cover that now just to get the fox out. And say so here's the auto pots. I'll give them a good washing ready for the next session, which won't be too long. And I managed to salvage out the bottom of some of the clay pebbles. I'll be putting them in a little mesh basket and washing them with a hose and uh, reuse them again, probably in the chilly wicking system in the greenhouse. And uh, to finish this little session off on the allotment this morning, I've also chucked in a sneaky little couple of bags of swift potatoes. I've got about eight or nine left over and I found these felt bags. So with the surplus compost that didn't go onto the bean bed, I put in here and uh, filled them up. I'm not a big fan of these felt bags because they do dry out quickly, but at least it'll be a bonus crop. I know I'd got one somewhere. When I did the bed last year, I actually got a piece of weird fabric membrane and saved it for this. I've given it a nice rake and a little water. So I'm just going to put this over 
If we do get any rain, it'll let the moisture through, and more importantly, deter the fox and cats. Well, I must admit that looks a lot better than it did at the start of the day. Still quite a lot to do, so hopefully you'll join me in the next video or so as we move along each bed. Do it in bite-sized chunks and we'll soon get through to it. I like to read all the comments that people kindly leave to me on YouTube, but you may be aware I also do Instagram as well. And it was on there, somebody left a, a lovely touching message. I'll put it up on the screen, but I personally like to read it out to you as well. And this comes from Maria underscore plants underscore grows knits and sows. And the message says, we sadly lost my dad at the weekend, a beautiful human being with not a bad bone in his body. I started visiting regularly at his allotment each Sunday during the first lockdown following my mum's passing when we were trying to work the rules so both myself and my brother with his new son could all have contact with dad. Since then I've been passionate about the allotment and learning all I can it was Dad that introduced me to the Muddy Boots and also Plot 37 YouTube channels. And we would message each other when new videos were uploaded and posted. I have such happy memories of spending time with Dad and I hope I can make him proud by making a good effort of keeping the plot going on my own. It's messages like that that make me realise that producing videos like this is so worthwhile we have some horrible days where filming takes three times longer than actually doing the gardening task. But it's messages, as I said, like that. Keeps me producing these videos, so thanks very much. So that's about it. I'll see you in the next video, where hopefully we can get this a bit farther forward, ready for planting. Until then, bye for now.